Are we Ooh. live? Yeah, Confirm. you're looking live. Okay. Um, Alright, so welcome. Welcome to the D&D &D test run. Um, this is part three. Oh. Uh, we have been YouTubing it, uh, or uh, we have been archiving it on YouTube, but now we are going to test stream it tonight. See how that goes, and then we'll start the real thing probably in a week or two, I'm guessing. That's up to God, though. Um, I guess first off we'll do people introductions for the second time. <laughs> so apparently I wasn't streaming before. Um, first we got Mr. Yonker playing as Grok. Say hello there, Hello, Grok. people. I have ears or a bow, depending on how we want to call it. <laughs> And then we have Dr. Dope playing as Shakti. Look at my TV! <laughs> Doing that for the second time. Great, great. And then we have Tyrio playing as Godfried. It's not a webcam, but uh, you want to say hello so people know your voice, Tyrio? They already know my voice from fucking <laughs> VSO, so at least most of them do. Not on Twitch, dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> we all played fucking <laughs> yes, so. And then of course we have Centric. God, aka Eccentric, playing as the DM. Hey everyone, I am Eccentric, or God, as Doctor Dope calls me. Um, we have uh, this here is part three of our test run campaign. Um, <laughs> we're going to be moving on to a standard campaign later on. What you guys watching over there? <laughs> I don't even have to guess who that was. As you can tell, this is the kind of stuff I've had to put up with for the past two weeks. But, um, yeah, we're using the Roll20 system here tonight. Uh, we're kind of testing some stuff out, and we're actually doing a test stream here to see how everything works out. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this session, and Let's yeah, hopefully you'll tune in for future ones. Oh, man. That was funny. Dope. We know that was you. No, what? I was just checking my email. Just because bitches send me videos doesn't mean shit. <laughs> so, anyways, um, last time on D and D. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, for those who managed to catch the second session off of YouTube, you'll know that the crew here ended up entering the killing fields. As uh, Grok went a little bit Incredible Hulk on us here and started using bodies and live bodies as weapons and projectile weapons. Um, it was actually kind of interesting, and uh, interesting for me at least, because there's nowhere in any book where it says a dead body used as a thrown weapon does a certain amount of damage. <laughs> so everything on that one was basically a uh, seat of my pants. Um, so with that in case, let's see what these guys are going to do starting this week here and see how they can try to throw me off my game. Um, at the end of last week, we ended with everybody, you know, heading back to the detective agency and everyone was heading to sleep. We had a scout out trying to find out where the amulet had kind of wandered off to. So we'll go ahead. We'll pick it up from the morning. All right, so we're just getting up, pretty much. So, so, what's up? Oh, basically, it's morning. I don't know if you guys are getting up or not. You could roll over, look at the window, say, <laughs> damn, it's early, and go back the fuck to sleep. I don't know this shit. Snooze button. Uh, no, I'm just uh, looking at my spells and shit, like I would do in the morning, and uh, getting ready to head out and uh, track, track whoever took the amulet down. Trying to remember everything since you got knocked the fuck out last time. Yeah, kind of, kind of recuperating still. Sharpening blades. Thinking What's about uh, about Godfrey taking shit <laughs> that tent, <laughs> but not really. 
Yes, and uh, for those who didn't catch the second episode, Gottfried, being the little rogue and sneaky little bastard that he is, decided that when he found a chest in one of the tents, he was going to take all of it for himself and not share. So, unfortunately, Callian's holding a little bit of a grudge over that, it would seem. A little bit. So, Grok was outside, Callian's sharpening weapons. Twenty-year bastard is nowhere to be found at this time. All right, so I'm gonna head over and find uh, what's his face, Indelthon. Indel, is that how you pronounce Indelthon? Yeah, I'm gonna find him yeah. and uh, ask him about the uh, tracker that he was looking for to help us. So do I find Indelthon? You find him downstairs when you walk down there. Okay, yeah, so I go down there, I'm like, Hey, Endelthon, how you doing this morning? I'm pretty good, all things considered. Okay, that's, that's good. Uh, any news on the tracker? Well, we haven't gotten a message back yet, but I sent him out last night, so... Okay. So what do you think, anything that we should be doing in the meantime, or...? Grabbing some lunch, getting ready. Okay. I'm always ready, by the way. <laughs> uh, Any sign to the rest of the group? No, nah, I think they're just getting getting things situated. Kinda kinda a big battle yesterday against all them goblins, so Yeah, I heard a little bit about that. Yeah, I I got knocked out. <laughs> It was pretty rough, pretty rough. I wasn't referring to that, I was referring to uh, the absolute terror that a certain orc that's outside the building here decided yeah. to spread by throwing dead bodies around the field. And he's oh, got yeah. indigestion from eating a few of them. Oh yeah, Grok showed his uh, combat prowess out there. Definitely had more respect for Grok after that. Well, I suppose it's good to have a priest that can actually get in there and do some melee damage as well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um... Alright, so I guess I'm going to head over to the tavern. If you see the other guys, just tell them I went over to get something to eat. I can do that. Okay, so I head to the tavern and just grab a meal over there. I, I also okay. do the same. Alright, so you decide to come down not talk to anyone and just head over to the tavern? Mm-hmm. Okay. Grok, besides having indigestion and still being outside, what are you doing? I'm going to go get some food, too. All right, good idea. And the way to fix indigestion is put more food on top of it. Until it all comes back up. Well, then <laughs> hopefully we'll be in a battle for that. Why not? That'd be a great projectile weapon. Yeah. Your opponent is blinded and disgusted. <laughs> all right, so you guys head on over towards the tavern. Um, when you get inside there, you find a pointy-eared bastard already inside. I just kind of nod to him, go sit down, and order my food. I'm like so, uh, definitely showed your combat prowess over there. You and Grok did quite a number on them goblins, pointy-eared bastard. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I'm actually kind of a bit more afraid of Grok than I am of anything else that we're coming up against. Yeah, he, I don't like little green people. <laughs> yeah, he tore them goblins apart. They taste funny. Yeah, that's another concerning point. Of course they taste funny. <laughs> Grok. They're not food. They have blood and intestines in them, sir. So, Grok, are you feeling alright after eating them goblins? Is that something you do often? <laughs> no, that one was new. What? Eating green people was new. I had to try. <laughs> they say there's a first time for everything, but hopefully there's not a second time for that. That was disgusting. Well, you know what, Grok? How about me and you go to that farm we were going to get the cow from? Remember the cow? Yeah. Yeah. Memo juice. Me me and you should go over there to the farm 
and pick out some things for the for the road ahead. What do you think about that? Sounds good to me. Pick out some chickens and some cow, some pig, all kinds of stuff. No, so you're actually going in for the entire livestock now compared to standard rations. <laughs> Grok has special needs. <laughs> Grok is plenty special. Yes, I agree. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, like, yeah, after, after our meal here, Grok will head over to the farm and we'll pick out some stuff. Shopping! Uh, uh, yeah, I'm fine. I don't want to see that. All right, so yeah, I'm just eating kind of quietly after that. Okay, so what has everybody ordered? Uh, meal of the day. <laughs> All right, it's going to be three silver. Okay. Grok, what'd you get? Bubbly sweet water. This early in the morning? Man, you got a problem. <laughs> Anytime he's there, that's what he's gonna have. Okay, that's fine. What do you want to eat? Uh, just the bubbly sweet water for now. <laughs> yeah, he's got indigestion, so let's give him a hangover instead. <laughs> yeah, trade off. Alrighty. Um, that's gonna be one gold as always. And uh, Godfrey, you said you're going for the uh, the usual. Yeah. Are we talking usual breakfast meal, or are we talking usual dinner meal? Usual breakfast. Alright, so that's going to be uh, three silver. <laughs> I'm waiting for someone to say something, do something. Oh, are we done with our meal? I'm going to the farm with Grok, if we are. Yep. We're going shopping, shopping, shopping. Alright, so... Yeah, we go, back to, we go back to that farm, I guess, or just some farm nearby that has a lot of livestock and whatnot. Okay. In the meantime, I take it, uh, Godfrey's staying there at the bar, and point your bastard is being awkward around people, as always. <laughs> Sounds about right. So, all right, you two head off down to the farm. Well, the closest farm, I should say. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So I go up to the door and I knock and try to find the head man at the farm. A woman opens the door, kind of eyes the two of you rather suspiciously, and says, "What do you want?" Uh, we're here to buy some livestock. <laughs> Is anything for sale, or...? Well, we do have some extra that we were going to lead to the, uh, one of the slaughterhouses, but... I suppose it wouldn't hurt if the coin's right. Let me go get my husband. Okay. Yep, we got a big fella here, and he's quite hungry. Jeez, he's already walked off. Leaving you two outside, no less. Oh. Comes back a couple minutes <laughs> later uh, with what you can only assume to be her husband. Okay. I would say, hello, sir. We got a big fella here and I'm um, looking for some livestock to <laughs> feed him. <laughs> yeah, it looks like he'd take probably about half the farm for a month. Well, what you got? I have all kinds of stuff. What are you looking for? Crack? What are you hungry for? Momo juice. <laughs> Apparently he wants some milk. Do you have a large quantity of milk we can, can buy off no of more. you? No more today. Everything that we done milk today I already went out to the shops. Uh, all right. I want a Momo. I want a mumbo that makes milk juice. <laughs> All right. How about we come back in uh, in a couple days, and uh, I'll give you half now, and half when we pick up the uh, milk. A lot of milk. We're gonna need a lot of milk. What? 
I can put in bag. Mm, yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll make the arrangement then. All right, great. And I uh, hand them. How much is it going to cost, sir? Depends on the quantity. Uh, Grok, how much Moo Moo juice would you say you uh, drink in a day? Uh, as much as Moo Moo will make. <laughs> <laughs> Just however much you can get in a day. I don't. I'm not quite sure how much that is. I'm. I'm not too knowledgeable about farms and whatnot, but. Um, yeah, we'll we'll take quite a bit of it. I'll tell you what, I gotta make some arrangements with some of the shops beforehand. That way, they make sure they've got enough from the day before. Give me okay. about a day or so, and I'll make arrangements, and we'll work out prices then. All right, and we're gonna need some uh, containers. I'd say some jugs that can be corked and uh, stored for a little bit. How else do you think we deliver this stuff? Okay, I just want to make sure. All right, great. How big is our bag? Can I big. put a cow in a bag? <laughs> bag of holding is the size of a backpack as far as the opening. No, you can't fit an entire cow in one. Aw. I was just going to take a cow and drink from it every time I needed to. Yeah, that'd be great, just this teat suddenly sticking out of your backpack. <laughs> yeah. It's okay, what are you two up to now, then? Uh, I'm going back to Indelfon, seeing what the news is. I don't know about the other Godfrey, guys. Godfrey, are you doing anything? <clears throat> Figuring after you finish your uh, breakfast there? Suppose I just hang out for a while. Wait for something interesting to happen, I suppose. Alright, well, if one of your bastards says he's going to go ahead and head back to the agency, see whether or not there's been any new developments or clues that have come in. Yay, rain and thunder. Blood and thunder. Alright, so at about the same time, Callaghan, Pointy Eared Bastard, and Grok all show up outside the detective agency. Alright. I go, uh, so, Endothon, any, any news yet? Well, I have gotten word back from our religious expert, at least. Nothing yet from the tracker. Okay. Yeah, it turns out that necklace you found was part of the, uh, the worm cult. The worm cult, huh? Yeah, these ones are apparently people that keep raising dead dragons back to become draculiches. Definitely not a good thing to start messing with. But if they've got our amulet, there's a reason. Alright. Um, do you know where this religious expert is? So we can kind of get some info? Or is that all the info that that you have? That's about all the info that we have on them. We don't know where they are, where they're situated, especially not around here. We've never heard of any activities out here from them. All right. Seems like this is going to be quite a long investigation then. Could be. It depends. I hope the on... rewards are uh, worthwhile. As you say that. See a tiny bird flying down towards Endelthon with something in its claw. Endelthon takes the uh, bird, lets it land on his hand, takes the piece of paper from it, takes a look at it, says, All right, figure you guys should want to go get your fourth member. We gotta start heading out. Okay. Was Godfrey not with us? One year bastard says, uh, yeah, he's back over at the tavern last I saw. Uh, okay. Guess we'll go get him. Damn gnomes. And I just <laughs> trot off to the, uh, 
<laughs> to the tavern. And I follow along, of course. Okay. Right. So I'm like, so I'm like, Godfrey, we're about to hit the road. <clears throat> Yeah, have, you, yeah. have you done all you need to do here in town? Suppose so. I uh, get up and <laughs> climb on the Grax back. Yeah. <laughs> Hoping he doesn't trip over himself. Point of your best, he kind of looks over at Grok and you climb it up on his back and says, Well, at least I suppose that would make the trip faster. Drax is gonna let him do it. <laughs> Makes me master blaster. Nunu from League of Legends. All right, so I guess they're Godfrey's climbing up on his back, and I'm just like, all right, so I go back to Endelfon. As you're heading back towards the detective agency, you see Endelfon and a couple more guys are all heading off towards where you guys are. Said, all right, you ready? Yep, I think I have everything. How about you guys? I've got my mount. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> my tummy feels better. Yeah, right, I suppose I guess we're ready. I'm ready to go. And then says, all right, follow me. Starts heading out the west gate of town from where you guys were previously. Okay. So how many people are with us? You've got about Endelthon and five additional people. Okay, so pretty sizable group. Yeah. You guys ended up uh, stopping one of the stables just a little bit outside of the uh, gate there, and Endelthon walks over, talks to one of the guys, and after a couple seconds there's a horse-drawn cart that's been brought out. Tells everyone, all right, hop in. We've got a bit of a ways to cover and a short time to do it. All right. Yeah, this time the cart goes back into the town and starts heading up through the north road. So y'all are moving along at a decent pace. And Lothan turns around and says, all right, from word that I got from my tracker... There's a decent sized cave up to the north here that he managed to follow your guy to. Seems they're still in there. Alright, great. So we're on a wagon? Yes, you're on a wagon. <laughs> zoom, zoom! <laughs> Alright, Mazda, where's our check? Just kidding. Um, but yeah, as you guys are going takes only about two hours to get to about the point where he ends up calling the carriage to a halt. He says, all right, from here on, we're going to have to go on foot. It's going to be probably about half an hour to meet up with our scout. All right, great. All right, everybody roll me 20 ciders because you're going through plants again. Oh, God. Am I part of this, everybody? Not quite yet. You will oh. be shortly here. Yeah, we have yet to introduce your character, but you're about to come into it. Oh my god. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, Godfrey, roll me a hundred cider, would you? Wait, are you still on Grok's shoulders? <laughs> yeah. Roll me a hundred sided. Oh, boy. <laughs> I done tripped again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Grok manages to trip, but you manage to grab, grab onto an outlying tree limb before he hits the ground. So you're kind of hanging off of a tree right now, and Grok's on the ground. Galgan's okay. Pony your bastard's doing okay, too, so. But, 
As you make your way through the forest, you end up kind of coming across a little bit of a camp. You end up coming across some kind of uh, encampment there. Okay. Uh, uh, no more little green people. So we got the roll again to be quiet, or we just <laughs> no, see no, the encampment. I don't Little fun kind of signals y'all to be quiet. Okay. So what are what are we seeing there? Is there any goblins or what are we looking at there? Little fun kind of points off towards where the cave is. Says that's where they're at. At least the last time that they were seen. And Brock bellows out. What are we looking at? Shut up, Grok. You're not helping. <laughs> Middleton just kind of puts his hand over his face and says, Why did I have to bring a half-orc? <laughs> right, so I'm just making, waiting but, uh, for somebody to make a move, because uh, as a wizard I'm not going in first, that's for damn sure. Yeah, it says I'm trying to see our scout here, but... Ah, oh, wait a second, there they are. By the way, uh, Shakti, you're in on this. You've been scouting with one other person for this part. You're a little bit in front of the cave. And you just heard Grok yell out what he said. <laughs> what are we looking at? <laughs> so, if you look towards the noise, you see the uh, group there with uh, an additional human that you've had contact with before. <laughs> So he knows Endel's down, right? Yeah, he's he, he's officially in the game now. As <laughs> was one of the scouts, and Grok's just being noisy as hell for some reason. <laughs> Wait, okay. so I'm with you guys now? One of the scouts, or I'm like up to the side or something like that? You're one of the scouts. You're a little bit ahead of their current <laughs> position. Uh, um, and I hear Grok, and he says, what is that? Yeah. What are we looking at? Yeah. Well, then, stuff my, that my answer is, my answer is, you tell me. <laughs> you guys are currently looking at the position of the scout, and you're seeing one guy who's pretty well camouflaged, and you're seeing a chick who seems to be wearing scale mail, and I'll let Shakti go into the description of herself a little bit more. I see dragon lady. So if you want to do like a little character introduction to okay. Okay. Shakti. Yeah, as far as what she looks like and shit, what they're seeing. Scarily uh, angry well. lady. No, 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 no. You back off. <laughs> oh, the skills only come out when I'm upset. No, your armor. I'm good. okay. Your yeah, armor, my skill. armor skill. My armor That's skill it. is nice. I'm, I'm Shakti. I'm from Virat. And uh, I'm pale. Mm completely pale white skin with red hair and at the my crotch is also red and I have a fat ass and fat thighs yeah <laughs> and breasts big ass titties <laughs> point of your ambassador just kind of looks and says you know a name would have been enough we didn't need the entire life introduction thank you <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, but, but you said to describe myself. And Grok's off in the, off in the, in a little corner, kind of all giddy and happy, because he now found a milk lady. All right, so I guess I, guess I <laughs> go up to the uh, scouts real quiet, like, and I, I ask the the other scout, not not Shakti. I ask the other scout. So, what do we got here? Who have you guys tracked down here? Not exactly sure. Multiple footprints in and out, different locations. We sent a group of a couple inside earlier to try to uh, verify what was going on. No one's come back out yet. Do you think we're dealing with multiple? That was a couple hours ago. Multiple targets here. And there's definitely, I'd say there's probably four, from what I could see, just from the different size of the footprints. Um, there might be more. There might be less. I'm not exactly certain. Four. Okay. Alright, so I, I'm assuming these guys heard that. 
Or are they still a ways back? Uh, they're over talking with Shakti. Bear in mind they're close enough to where they could hear if they were listening. Okay. Gro Grok likes her hair. He's playing with her hair. <laughs> oh, Grok, you stop it. <laughs> By the way, Shakti, you kind of noticed that this guy's hand could easily smother your head if he did it wrong. Be nice, Grok. You're a sweet one. You're so sweet and big. Well, Senor DM. Yes. Sh Shakti shall be now be uh, treated as mommy was, so. Hey, that's on you guys and your role play. You no, know, I'm just letting you know the the gentle touch will be in, in <laughs> will be used in that one. Okay. Such mm. bullshit. What? That's such <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> You're gonna rub a little bit too hard and snap, broken neck. <laughs> All right, so I take a torch out of my out of my bag and I light it up with uh, continual flame that a spell yes yes it is ooh busting out some magic alrighty yep so I I light that bad boy up I don't think there's a roll required I just do it yeah, alright Pointing your bastard said, "Might be best to let me be on vanguard. I can see in the dark. I'm not sure about you guys." What? I'll be uh. What vanguard? I'll be close behind, pointy-eared. Uh, I'll just be following, being quiet as usual. Grok, that means that I'll be in the front. So I'm that just kind of holding my world. torch up and letting pointy-eared bastard get a little distance in front of me. Again, he can see in the dark. You don't really need to do that. Yeah, his his trait skill, yeah. Or his uh Well I'm holding it for my race. own well being. He I'm letting him go ahead. I'm letting him get some distance in the cave. I'm like you go ahead, we'll follow behind. <laughs> go go die. <laughs> bye. <laughs> Nobody likes you. Bye bye. Give us a sign. Wait, wait, I like you. Shock to hear. You going or what's up? Hell yeah, I'm gonna go. Make sure everything's okay. Alright, and Ulton says, alright, we'll try to secure this area. Make sure no one comes in behind you. Yeah. Right, great. <laughs> so what kind of environment is this we're going into? Cave. Yeah, cave. Cave, stone. Dark. Yep. Well, Grok's cowering next to the guy with the torch. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but don't orcs have a, some dark vision? Yes, but he still doesn't like the dark. <laughs> okay. Thunder. Just because you can see doesn't mean you like what you see. Yeah. Right, so I, get, I guess I give uh, come out in dark. <laughs> I guess I give pointy eared bastard like two minutes or so just to get in there and get some distance on us, and then I slowly uh, like follow and behind them, where, where I seen them walking. Alright, pointy eared bastard stops a short way after into the cave where it starts to get dark. Shakti, you in the front, back, where are you at? Shakti is in the middle at the moment. Grok, you at the front, middle, you're Actually, sitting cowering next to Callaghan? Yep. There you go. Cowering right. next to and behind Cal Caligan. Yeah, he's my shield. <laughs> but I'm your mommy. Yeah. <laughs> the squishiest one is your shield. Great. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's dark. You don't like dark. <clears throat> All right. A is Godfrey and... still on? Uh... Grok's shoulders, just out of curiosity. No, he, he got off when uh, when I tripped. <laughs> okay, so. Okay. What's, is it cold in this cave? No, it's a little cold, but the thing is, it's basically summertime as far as in general, so it's more cool than anything. I just noticed everyone has shifts in constitution. 
Alright, so I just go to point your bastard, and I'm like, I just do that, and I'm like, so? Anything? Uh, point of your bastard stopped because he thinks he's heard something. He's doing hand signals instead of talking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Grok puts his finger over his mouth and says, shh. I look at Grok and I'm like, <laughs> be quiet now. Point of your bastard is now doing a different hand signal that's not quite so polite. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what that could be. He's looking off in the distance, he points to the left, and he points to the right. Where you guys are at currently, just a second. There we go, should have transitioned for you. Should. Alright, and where is... Pointing your bastard, he's just in the darkness over there. Looks a bit backwards to me. Just rotate your damn character, you boob. No, I'm talking about the order of people. Mm hmm. There we go. No, Shakti said that she was going to be kind of towards the front in the middle. Rock is cowering next to Caligan, and Gottfried said he was hanging out at the back. Yeah. It's about the best that I could do for you. So, Pointy Your Bastard is pointed off to the left side and to the right side. It says he's hearing noises from here and from here. Okay. So I'm just waiting for your bastard to come back or do something. Cause I ain't going in there. No, Pointy your bastard has taken out his bow so that he can get a ranged attack on something if he's able to see it before it can see him. Okay, I'll I'll take his lead and I'll take out my uh, my crossbow. Brock's gotta go, so he goes up. here. Faces the wall here and takes the leak. <laughs> He's taking a leak on the wall. Right as you guys are getting ready. Yeah. You almost peed on Gorfiend. I mean, Godfrey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Godfrey's getting hit by the splashback. Oh, no, oh, that's not switch. good. Shakti gets her bull ready as well, just in case she needs to back up. Pointy eared bastard. Ladies first. Alright, so Godfrey's still just hanging out at the back, being the chicken shit. Or is he being smart and trying to do the whole move silently, sneak, hide crap that rogues are known for? It's gonna be relatively hard to hide in a cave like this. <laughs> Unless I use my cloak of chameleon. I'm just gonna say, it's, it's dark, it shouldn't be too hard to hide anywhere. <laughs> I'm not still ladies first. Is that what you say? <laughs> so I guess he's referring to Shakti. <laughs> Brock feels better. Alright. So I guess I move up. I don't know. Since nobody's moving. Or is that wait, I can... you can move yourself? Yeah. Oh. I move up slightly, one step. <laughs> I also moved up closer to uh, assist um, pointy eared bastard. Pointy eared bastard has unfortunately failed his move silently check, and as such, as he's trying to move up closer to one of the noises, ends up kicking a freaking rock. <laughs> so what does that mean? He just got owned? No, it means he just got detected. They all see him now. No, pointy eared bastard, no. <laughs> and Grok looks at pointy eared bastard and says, Shh. <laughs> really loudly. <laughs> <laughs> 
one of your bastard makes yet another rude hand gesture. <laughs> Guys, I think we need to go back up one of your bastard. I think someone's coming up to get him. After hearing that noise, unfortunately, you hear sets of footsteps off to the left and off to the right, one of each direction. Callahan, you get the right. I'm going to take the left. Will do. Uh, it's clearly going to be combat, so might as well do our fucking rolls now. Yep. Yeah. Roll for initiative. Uh, yep, everybody roll me for initiative. 1d8. And then whatever initiative modifiers you have. <laughs> oh, God. All right, so rolling for initiative, what, what the fuck did I just do? See, it goes first. Oh. What order are we? We take turns in. Well, you have to do it more than once, or just once? Because I'm seeing people balls everywhere. No, he's, he's, he's rolling uh, for I have the to enemy. roll for pointy ear bastard in each of the enemies. Uh. So I guess while, like, as we're getting into combat, I, I yell, I guess I see these people somewhat, and I go, Give us the amulet, and you shall be spared. As you say that, an arrow flies by your ear saying that's a warning shot. It's right about here in the wall. So... It came from that one. <laughs> really? Holy shit. Then Grot picks up Godfrey and throws him at him. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just send Godfrey flying? Yep. <laughs> Oh, we lost, uh, we lost dope. He laughed too hard, it killed the connection. <laughs> Hold on, I got to, I have to readjust the cameras. Oops. Okay. What? What happened? I have to readjust the cameras. I picked you up and threw you. At what? You go to hit Shafi here. At the archer. Okay. Well, you get to go first, Godfrey, so you have a choice as to whether or not you're getting grabbed. Uh, yeah. Uh, no. I'm just going to sit here with my clerk of chameleon around me. I'm going to move slowly. Might as well just move down in Caladouche right now. Alright, so Grok, you got to reach where Godfried was and find a nice little uh, rock Nothing. there instead. Okay. A second here. So not for nothing, but uh, shouldn't this area be lit up by my torch, or? That's why you're able to see. Oh, okay. Yeah, your torch only has about a five square radius. So am I, I got a rock, right? Am I good to do stuff here? Alright, first up is Godfrey. Godfrey's hiding. Okay. Next up is this guy here that just took a pop shot at uh, Godfrey earlier after he tried to mouth <laughs> off. Being the closest one, he's going to try to go for Shakti here. I have a question. How the fuck is he shooting arrows at me when I see him with some like bullshit ass knives? That's just the token he's using. Oh. Yeah, they were basically the only tokens I could find that were any decent. Mmm. If you want to make me some generic archer tokens and things like that, feel free. Are you serious? Dude, I can do anything. I can do that for real? Yeah. yeah. 
Dude, I have, Yannette does like pixel art. I'm assuming that's what that looks like right there. She could knock that bitch out in a heartbeat. Uh oh. I do believe that is a tag on Shakti. What? What's that mean? In other words, I think you just got you just got smacked by an arrow. Damn it. Yeah, armor class is 17. All right, time to roll for damage. Who, me or you? Oh, oh, that's you. You take four points of damage. Oh, yes! You should tell him how to adjust his health in the roll 20. <clears throat> now, if you click on your character, click on the... Red uh, circle up top. Yeah, you can click on the circle where it's red, and you can enter the new number. And that'll be your current health, or basically. You just, or you can type in minus four, and it'll calculate it for you. And oh, after you get... Stupid Windows 8. Hold on. Windows 8 just went crazy. Ah. There you go. I did it. Alrighty. Grok, it's your turn. And he darts in front. He's still got the rock in his hand, of course. Darts in front of Shunt. And throws the rock at this dude. All right, roll me 100-sided first. Grog, okay. protect me. I love you so much, son. <laughs> Godfrey, roll me 100-sided as well, please. Why? <laughs> he went to reach for you, and he picked up a rock instead. We're trying to find out whether or not it was you or an actual rock. <laughs> yeah, you and the cloak. Well, think of it this way, if Brock actually threw Godfrey, could you imagine Godfrey flying in the air with some fucking daggers to stab him in the shit? That'd be great. <laughs> that was the idea. <laughs> Cannonball like special from X-Men. <laughs> but no, not this time. It's actually a rock. Okay. So, roll me a 20-sided with your strength modifier. Alright. One... And which one are you aiming at again? That one... The one that's hurting me. Do, 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 do. Yep, pretty much. Um, let's see. Plus. Hey, get in there. Oh. <laughs> you end up hitting the cave wall right about there. But I threw it really, really hard. <laughs> Yeah, pit, bits of uh, debris and stuff are kind of pelting the guy, but nothing as far as damage. <laughs> I got his attention, though. <laughs> right. It's a good thing that it wasn't me. I'd probably be dead or injured. Uh, you or both. You could have rolled for a save against the... You got dexterity, so... Yeah, you can roll for a save to, you know, kind of do a flip and land with your feet instead of your head. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, Brock. Uh, next time. Shocks, it's your turn. My turn to do what? Move. Can I shoot try. him in the face? Yeah, we can try. You can, but I'd suggest not trying to do it through Grok. I'm kind of a big Grok. green wall in front of you right now. Grok, can you go hang out with Caligan for a second, please? Uh, my turn's done. Oh. And Grok won't move to unprotect hmm. you. So. Yeah, you, so you'd, you'd have to step around or something like that. Shoot between his arms, dude, or his legs, if you're short enough. <laughs> he's human, he's not short. that short. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think I can shoot through you're your legs, so I'm going to have to move. Oh, you can crouch. I can move, I'm going to have to move right there. Does that take my turn? No. no. That's part of it. You can move up to six spaces, I believe I said, or was it five? Yeah, you can move right next to me if you want. So then I can move. I that's two six. spaces. Yeah. And then right yeah, there, attack, and, then I, and then you can finish it off if you want to, as far as movement. I can. Can I? I can choose attack him now with my bow. Mhm. Mm yeah. All right. Oh, I want to shoot him in the fucking face for hurting my son. Don't go for a called to. shot. Wait, what's that? I'm just saying everything's in the fucking face. Not a the called shot. Face? A called shot is when you specify a certain part of the target that you're aiming for. You oh. have to get a negative penalty for it. 
Oh, okay. And no, it doesn't do any additional damage, and you cannot one-shot kill somebody by saying, I'm going for a headshot. It doesn't work. Uh, okay, so then I'm going to attempt to launch this arrow at his general direction. <laughs> you can say, I just want to put an arrow in him. Or your father was a hamster and your mother was a whore. <laughs> wait, 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 your father smelled of elderberries. <laughs> yeah, mother was a hamster, father smelled of elderberries. That's what it was. That's what it was. <laughs> We're so go away or I will have to taunt you a second time. Ah, that's where it's from. Okay, right, got it. In your general direction. <laughs> you silly English nigget types. <laughs> So I want to shoot an arrow at him, at least okay. to attempt. All right, roll a 1d20 with your attack modifier for that. Let me see just a second. What was it, the European Sparrow and the African Sparrow? Unladen what? European Swallow. Swallow, okay. That's what it was. All right, so 15 is my number. What's that mean? That means that we still didn't end up putting down the attack bonus for anything for you. I thought Dragon did this shit. I did not do that. You you have to remember that when you do an attack roll. Remember, I need to know what I'm talking about before I can remember it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm going to be getting that for you right now. While we're all while, running, while you do that, Shakti's gonna pray to her god right now because, you know, <laughs> she's gonna be going into combat, so she needs to get some spiritual guidance and hope to God that her amulet comes down to her, or whatever the hell it's supposed to be, her relic, that has not been in her bags yet. So, maybe, maybe you want to activate one of your auras too. That might help. How do you do that? Free action. What's free action? Doesn't take part of a turn. Look at the bottom of your character sheet, dope, and look at your auras. I see the auras. You don't have an aura on. activated. That's what he's telling you. I got you. Um, crap. Where my aura is at? Aura bonus on energy shield power and. Per per oh yeah, that's right. All right, I will do an aura of power. Everybody, re everybody receives off of that, right? Everybody within your aura range, yes. Uh, okay. We lost your cam. No, we just outright lost him. Yeah. <laughs> doom, doom, doom. Do we have music for that? <laughs> Technical difficulties. Yeah, technical difficulties. No, it was more like my fucking Norton decided, hey, let me close your browser so I can keep on scanning. Fucking bitch. Oh. Disable that, man. I forgot. It's my computer's new still, right. man. I have a lot of shit to do. So, right, for your so. crossbow, it's 1d20 plus 4 from now on. But you got a 15, that's a 19, that's a hit. Roll for your damage. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to open up my sheet. I need to understand all this shit you're telling me to do. Your damage is written down, though. Okay. I'm looking here now. Okay. I chose the aura of power. Does, it, does everybody receive that aura, correct? Everyone currently within your aura range receives it, yes. Okay. And my aura of power bonus attack on rolls, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, I, got, I rolled a 15, correct? And uh, my bonus, how does that work? You roll to 15, you get three base attack bonus for your character's class and level. You get an additional one for ranged weapons because of dexterity bonuses. So you get four, and then with the aura active, it'd be five. So that becomes 20. In total, yes, and that's higher than his armor class, so you smacked him. Yeah, bitch! All right, so then what else do I do? Roll for damage to see how much you hurt him. Okay. In the case of your crossbow, if you're looking at your sheet, you see right next to it says crossbow light. And you've got another part there. Uh, I'm looking for the sheet. Where's my crossbow at? Just to the right of your stat scores. Is where your weapons are listed. Mace, having range type dire weapon. 
Crossbow light attack, 80 feet piercing. Hold on. It's, what, what, what's the four mean? This is 1d8 times two. Oh, the attack bonus is four. Yeah, attack bonus is four. Damage mm -hmm. is rolled as 1d8. So you don't okay. get any additional bonus on that because it's not using strength or anything. If it was a critical hit, which means a natural 20 on the die before any bonuses, you'd mm -hmm. get a times two. Okay, so at this point right now, I'm rolling a 1d8, correct? Yes, roll a 1d8, and then I subtract those off of his hit point. Okay. Give me something good. Okay. Um, Seven orange eight. man. Good roll. Nicely done. That hit him in uh, one of the legs quite deeply. Can you just be a cool DM and told, say I hit him in the nutsack or something? No, because that would actually disable him from fighting. Oh, that would be so fucking awesome. I caught an arrow right between my balls. <laughs> yes, I used to be an adventurer like you, and then I caught an arrow to the sack. <laughs> oh, that one. <laughs> It's kind of what I figured you were going for originally, but... No, I was just talking about his balls, but, you know, that's good, too. Pony your bastard's turn. He's actually going to drop his bow, pull out his sword, and bull rush this SOB. Yeah, because you oh, such, shit. such great luck last time in doing that. Go point Last your time bastard. he did that, he impaled people. It's when he tried to use saying. the bow, he had problems. That wasn't sarcastic. I was saying you had such great luck last time. And that's actually a mess. So he goes, ah. Uh -oh. Yeah, it's, it's got parried by the sound bow because of the fact that he tried to do a thrust. Did he have a Instead battle a cry when he charged? Yeah, something along the lines of for pony or something. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Calgan, it's your turn. Okay. And no casting magic missile at the darkness. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. For anyone that gets that reference, I know they're probably laughing right now, but there was a uh, skit about people playing D&D. &D. It was on, uh, God, what game was it? I think it was Summoner. Uh, the very first one, it was a little skit where they're sitting there playing D&D, &D and the guy comes out, and you cast Magic Missile of the Darkness for no freaking reason, and he casts it at just the fact that it's dark. <laughs> That's um... why I said that since you're a caster. Do I have line of sight on any of these? I guess pointy eared bastards in the way of that one, and I can't see through these guys here. Grok and Shakti. Right, they're kind of forming a little bit of a wall right now. Okay. All right, what, what did I miss? I had. Uh... Um, I guess what I will do then. I had drink service come along. Let's see what kind of spells we got working with here. By the power of Grayskull. Well, I gotta, I gotta find my orco. I got an orco pillow. Considering I can't see them, I don't want to take a chance and hit my my compadres here. So I go ahead and cast. Uh, yeah, I guess I cast true strike on myself. Okay. So. Any movement? Anything else? Uh, I think I'm going to take a little step right over in this direction, like that. Yeah, that's a step. Yeah, a little, little, like kind of put my back against the wall and just kind of shimmy down that way. Okay. 